Okay. I am Lena Merle Chapman, and today I we're excited about our region directors being present today. So we are going to get started. I am going to share a slide, a few slides with you. And if you can see my screen, move some things up the way. Okay. Okay, got your little music so you can get your mind all right and ready for this session today because you know when you become a regional director, it's just like playing music. So we're going to take that today and we're going to take it to a next step. I'm excited about those who are on already and those who are coming on. I am Lena Merle Chapman, the Vice President of NCRSP, the past Region Director of Region 4, uh, past, past. So today we're going to talk about together we will discuss and share what makes an outstanding region director. What is it that you should know? What is it that we should do? And how do we become better in our role? So let's go back and do the background just a little bit. You know, we in North Carolina. North Carolina has the regions listed below in color. And have you noticed how we are one of the, to me, a beautiful state because I love the way it's shaped. But we go from one side to the other, and there are a lot of different counties and cities in North Carolina. And NCRSP will touch each one of those to the best of our ability. So here we are with our regions and uh, of North Carolina. I am glad to know. So if you are on here, feel free. If you have not already, please put your region beside your name. And I am going to do the same with mine. So I am going to go to the right side of my screen, rename, and I'm going to put region four, put R4 and change it. So we'll know what regions we have here. Okay, so when the ones who are looking at the recording will see those of us who are here. So I'm going to go through this. I want you to know that uh, this is a, a group discussion. I will facilitate. That means that I can keep the discussion going. So you need to feel free to chip in, whether it's staff or directors or whatever, so that our uh, whatever questions we have, we can try to find an answer. And whatever information that needs to be changed or update, we can do that together. So we're going to talk about a region leadership role and responsibility. Well, first of all, you know, when you are new to the organization or just not been to the region level, it is a, a little bit more to learn, especially if you were more local. And I'm going to show my, sc my screen, uh, if, if you don't mind. I, I'm still here, so those who need to be able to see me. So when you are the region leader, you know, you have a big responsibility. I know in Region 4, we have about nine locals that we are responsible for. See, that's different from being a local president where you sort of used to everybody, the people in your, in your school system. But when you're in the region level, you have to reach out beyond your own local to other locals because you come together as a region. And what I like about NCRSP, I like the way information flows from not only from bottom up, but from top to bottom. So you're going to go from the state to the region to the local. So information should flow that way. And that's how we grow our leadership as well. So uh, I have already talked about the introduction and uh, we'll do our aim, role and responsibility, do a little bit about a strategic plan, enhance skills and do a little trivia and we want to do prizes. I'll get you a prize, but you're not close to me enough yet. But anyway, but we can. I can always send you something. We're going to have a little trivia. Uh, members are our mission. You've heard that throughout the last month that our members are our mission. And if you notice that whatever we can do to benefit members uh, who of, of, our, of our association, we're gonna to try to do just that. 
By the end of this session, we will examine the role and responsibility of the region director, understand the challenges of leading the board members of specified region of North Carolina retired school personnel, and commit to engaging members in responsible behavior and activities according to the guidelines of NCRSP region, our regions. Regions are so important. Here it's gonna tell us the roles and responsibility. I'm gonna go back a little bit of our region. We're gonna do the top 10. Number one, leadership is, I like to start at the bottom because on this one, just the last sentence, where it says leadership is plural, not singular. Leadership is plural. That means that no one person doing everything alone. It takes a team. It takes a representative from each of those locals. It takes a board of directors, take a group of people to make things happen the way they should. And we can, you can always tell when an organization is run by one person or a, a local is run by one person or region. Our intent is to be a come together as one, but a group of people instead. Leader of the region board. Meet with your region board regularly. Communicate with board members between meetings. Preside over meetings. Appoint standing committee chairs according to your NCRSP bylaws and policies. Participate and provide leadership training and fund other regional leaders to attend. Attend state NCRSP executive board meetings. Participate in the state sponsor program. Interpret regions policies to your board. When I first became a board member, you know, I didn't realize, I just when I learned that I had a position to sit on the state board, on the executive board of the state. I didn't know that. I was just substituting for someone who had gotten sick and they asked me to do. So, but what it does for you, it gives you that full picture from the, from the state to your local. So you become a better region uh, chair, uh, a director because you know what's going on in the state as well. So when you're, you know, as a region director, it is important that you do attend those meetings that that gives you that extra knowledge that you need in order to be a more effective leader for your own region. One of the things that we do on the state and one of my roles is that having that state strategic plan. But out of that plan, the region's strategic plan should also be a part of that. That means that you should have your own plan. What do you plan to do? Get with your board during your summer retreat or a time in the summer when you know when it's not so busy and you come together and you make your plans for the year. You know what the mission is of the of NCRSP and you know what the state goals and their focus is. So that's when the region should come together and create their own strategic plan based on what the state has guidelines also and what the mission is. So you set your region goals and then you uh, you implement those goals throughout the year. So that, why do you even need a strategic plan? It's just saying where it was when we were in public schools teaching and working, we all had to have a strategic plan. We had to know where we were going and how we were gonna get there. So if we know we're going to the beach this weekend, we're going to have a plan. So just like anything else, if you want to go somewhere and get there successfully, you got to have a plan. And then it takes a team to implement that plan. So you're going to set your directions and your priorities. It defines our organization views of success and priorities and activities that will make the view your reality. This strategy will help your members know what they should be working on and what they should be working on first or uh, in what order. The strategic plan, even though you might have it within you as a region director, how do you get what's in you to those other members and to that leadership so that those people on your board can get it back to their local? To get everyone on the same page, big purpose. If you're going to have a plan, you have to not only write that plan, you have to know that plan, and not only you have to know it, you have to make sure everybody on your team knows it. So that puts you on the same page. To simplify decision-making, your strategy will uh, always already prioritize the activities necessary for success. I think each region always looking for success, 
And I even find that some of the regions are a little competitive. And that's, a, that's not a bad thing. So you're trying to experience your success. When I was working with the awards of recognition, I mean, people were very concerned and very making sure that their region was recognized. You know, or their local was recognized. So you want to, you know, so competition is not a bad thing. That means that you're working for something. And I think that's good. And you want to be the best at what you're doing. Uh, you want to make sure that plan is going to line things for you. It's going to put things in line so that you, when you're walking that walk, you know your next step and you're making that step happen. And remember, our number one goal is to solve the mission of this of this association. Make sure we still focus on the mission um, because you can get so far away and you're not looking at your mission so that your plan must stick to your mission to communicate the message. And we're going to talk about communication just a little bit later on. This session is focused on you, the leaders of the region, and on the vital role you play in facilitating and organizing strategies throughout your association. I look at some of you all here and I know I'm talking to the choir, but that's okay. We still, the choir has to do some little practicing. I did send out, um, I, when I will send out the one for the uh, regions, a new, an updated one for the strategic plan. This is just a form that is an easy one to use where you can have your state goals, your region goals, and then whatever the committee goes, if you need be. And this is where you will put your objectives, your strategies, your activities, any financial resource it might entail. It helps the person during the summer when you are, are doing the June, when you are doing your proposed budget. This plan will help you uh, organize your budget because you can see what the different committees that you have, standing committees, and what their needs are. And that can for help form your budget as well. Your timeline, whatever activities you're placing, when should it happen, how long it should stay in place. And then you at the it's in June, it's an evaluation month. This is when you look back as a region director and your and your board look back over that year and come up with some type of assessment for whatever you said you were going to do. Did it happen? What could be better? Was it successful? So it always gives you an opportunity. One of the things that I find real successful to me, and I do it with about every organization, and I have an older sheet up here purposely done. Um, I like to have that calendar of events in advance based on our plan so that every each member of this of the uh, region can look at that calendar. You know, I don't always do this kind anymore. I do the Google calendar for those who need to pop up on their phone, on their calendar. But everybody needs to know to see the year at a scope. What is it that we are, are planning to do? And what are our meeting dates? So sometimes it's a little bit more detailed, but this is a very general one so that no one has to call and say, when is our next executive board meeting? Or when is the region four meeting? Uh, that type thing. So I like for them to know in advance where the meetings are, what time the meetings will be, and when they are. Very simple. And I ask them to put these dates in their phone so that, you know, like my phone will alarm, you know, ring, ring, and something's going on. Like, what is it? Oh, there's a region four board meeting. I, I need to go, you know, sometimes I have to get my warning. So it gives you an opportunity to share, but not just with you and your board. You know, I have one that this one was most executive board here, but I have one that I always do for every single member and I put it in the communication in the newsletter that goes after them so they can just look at that at any time. And then we email it to their emails and we can text it to their phone and we can put it on the calendar. We try to do all of those things so that they will not forget to come, whether the region meeting or whether it's a local meeting. But it's a good tool, and you do. I do that during the summer, so when people are planning their vacation or planning things during the year, they can look at that and say, "Oh, well, I best not plan to go out of town this weekend because we have a region this or we have a local this." It's good to have it so that every single member can look at that and tell. And I'm gonna tell you, they do look at it. I changed our local meeting about a few weeks ago. Um, I think it was, it was the May meeting. And you wouldn't believe how many emails I got. Did you change the date? You said we're going to meet on this date. 
How you change your day? I planned my mama's um, doctor's appointment around this day. <laughs> I got all kind of calls. And I know you've experienced the same thing, but they do look at it and it puts us on the same page. <laughs> I think it's important that region directors understand organizing structure and the flow chart of our organization. And I hope it doesn't change. So, you know, we I put the members at the top because without the members, there's no need for NCRSP. Then I have the locals, then the region, then the retired division on the state level, then the NCAE and the NEA. You notice how I have the arrows going up and down because that's the way information flows. You know, we, you know, we there are some things that come from the top, but there are a lot of things that come from the bottom because you have the bottom vote as locals. So, uh, but that's the uh, connection that we try to make. If either one of those are missing, then there's a lack of information flowing in the right direction or information period. If we moved out the region, let's say we moved the word region, that means the members and the locals, that means that each local would be responsible for taking everything to the state and trying to communicate with the state. And I don't think our staff can handle every single local in that way, but all information. So the region can, sort of like a clearinghouse, take care of some of those things so the state staff can do their role. So each one of those areas are so important. Each member need to know that they are part of something else. And we had that this morning in, in the membership workshop. When you are, uh, when the region director selects the they are chair people of their standing committees. I know many of us don't even select. We were trying to beg to get somebody to do it. But if you're going to select your members of communication, there are things that you just can't put someone in communication and on the region level who's never been a member of the region and for the, you expect them to know what to do. That's why that summer leadership retreat for your region the state, what we've done with the state, I think is wonderful, but you got to have something for your region. So when you bring people in, it cuts that fear out if they have an idea what the expectations are. So if you're going to choose someone in communication, you know, you're going to promote the use of um, whatever you're going to use, print, electronic. You're going to encourage them, you know, to develop the website under communication, Um whether link them between the local and the region and the state, whatever it needs to happen, that chairperson, in, as, a, as a region director, you have to make sure that that chairperson understands that role and can implement that role and use all variable resources. Sometimes it's not easy getting a communication chairperson because when people at our age and stage, they're quick to say, well, I don't know how to use technology. I better not do that one. Oh, I don't know how to do that. But, you know, there's lots of training available. So we we will walk through with them and we will hold their hand if they have an issue with communication. If they have never done a newsletter, electronic newsletter, we can hold their hand. And hopefully one day that uh, MailChimp will be one of our sessions so we can move people to a next level when it comes to newsletter communication. It's just much easier and it just looks prettier and you can just do it in a, in a matter of minutes. And I do know that we have folks who are still paper only. They're not going to do an email. And then we it, it's easy to print a few copies and you just mail those off. But that newsletter, uh, some people look as a challenge, but it, it really is pretty easy now with all the electronic software uh, that you can use to create communication. And the good thing is you don't have to say, well, I'm going to do a three newsletters a year. You can do a newsletter every month or every week or something out there. And you can call it weekly updates or something. If you've got a, a monthly newsletter that you do it electronically and you know some information needs to be shared, you expect your communication to do some type of weekly update. There are forms you, you know, do and they just put it out there. Uh, and it's a good source. Be creative in your ideas. Um, one of the things I want you to look at is leadership. You have your director. And in and, and region four, we have co-directors. Take that back. Yeah, we have co-directors <laughs> and co-associate directors. Uh, we have a secretary and we have treasurer. 
And then we have the chair people, communications, community service, legislative recognition, quality of life membership. And then the local presidents are there as well. And then there are a few others that we'll talk about. But all of this makes up your board. If either one of these are missing, that information stops. It can't get anywhere else. So you that because, because the committees you see here, they are there's a state committee where they meet with. So the state chairperson is going to give them information. They're going to come to the regional meeting and share that information with you. And as region director, it is our role to make sure information is flowing properly. Because as region directors who is on this site today, and you are most of you already know this because you've been here for a while, you know that all of this. You are the leader, but you don't have to do all the work. That's why you have good those good chair people there and who want to do their job and do it well. Membership is, is powerful. You know, membership is one. We had a workshop this morning on membership, and you know your membership chair is a big job. You need to know who the state membership chairperson is. We know it's Nell Burrell now. And your membership chair need to be introduced to her because they're going to meet her monthly. I think she still meets monthly and they not only meet with her, what is it they supposed to bring back? Now I've seen some bring back a full report, everything that was discussed and they're on top of things. Then I've seen some who come back and say, yeah, we had a meeting. We just have to keep getting more members and the report is over. We have to dig a little bit deep in that. As region director, you might have to ask a few more questions. You know, did you get any handouts? Or are you, is there a plan in place? Can, you know, what about this? What about that? Give us more. Make sure that when you create your agenda, region directors, that you do list your committee members and give them a chance to report back. I have been to some where the region director does all the reporting, covers all the committees, and the committee chairs are just sitting over there. It is uh, This is the time to let them do, do have the floor and let each of your standing committees have a part of that agenda and let them pre pre be prepared. Good to have it in advance. Put it up on the screen, digital. Um but make sure that you are not doing all of that work. Allow them to speak and allow them to implement the plan that, that they have been working on from the state and let the locals give their input. So it's important that we do that. Um, legislative is the one of the committees. You should have someone on your board uh, who is a member of that legislative committee from the state. And you should have that information shared at each meeting so the pr local presidents can hear it and the local uh, the legislative chair will also and and as region directors we have to make sure this happens that legislative chairperson have to also meet with the local legislative chairs sometimes they'll just meet with the state and that's it they need to bring information from the state to the region and then they also need to have a list of all the locals in their region and keep that information shared with them as well. And that's for all the committees, all of them. So if they only could share with the region and the local president had to take all of that back, they might forget something. So you wanna make sure that it's shared. Community service, where we do a lot of the volunteer and other special projects, it's the very same way. We have a representative on your board region who will represent community service. They meet uh, evidently monthly with the community service on the state level. Then they should meet with the community service on the local level so they can share what they have learned from the state, share what they pick up from the region, and then take it to the local as well. We know the local president was there. We know the local president heard that information. But encourage your local community chair people to present at their meetings, their local information. Any questions? Stop me at any time. Let's talk about a few other committees that you may have. I noticed that the different regions, some have different other committees that they put in place. Memorial is one of them. And Memorial is, I think, it's more common now than it used to be because you want to keep that information flowing properly and send what information to the state. 
uh, the locals will send you some information from the local and then you can compile that and also make sure the state get a copy. The locals many times will send their memorials to the state as well. You just want to make sure that happens as region directors. You want to know that as well. As a region director, you want to know if there are members in that region who are no longer with us. And, you know, so you want to hold that membership chair responsible for making sure that that information is shared either newsletter through email with the uh, president or during the uh, meetings, you can take a moment to put memorials on the agenda and give us a chance because many of these members who are no longer here were hard workers of NCRSP. We need to give them all the respect and work with them and make sure that people know that. And find a way to make sure. Now, one of the things that I do, um, local and whatever I'm, in, I'm doing, I have a letter that I write and that I don't care who it is, who from my little area, and I send it to the church or the funeral home. And 90% of the time, they will read it out. Just had one member, I think it was NCR, it could be AUW, but she was, the, the member was in New York and I got a card and she said, the, the uh, she said the most special moment for her during the service it's the very first thing they did. They read the letter from us. And she said, here I am in New York. Didn't think anybody at home even thought about me when I lost my brother. But she said the first letter they read was a beautiful letter that came from Greensboro. And so now all I do, and I just have a letter. I just do, I've been doing it forever. But you just send it to that. So you, I call the front home and I ask, put them, give them an email. And I say, well, I said, uh, Miss So-and-so and Mr. So-and-so were members of this organization. It will make us so happy if you would encourage them to read this letter, share this letter with Miss So and So and her family during the church service. And it, it's, it's worked every time. We've gotten some new members by doing that too, because they think it's a great thing. But you have to come up with your own ideas of what you want to do. Quality of life. Yeah. Quality of life uh, is one of the committees that can almost make us or break us as an organization. People don't really care what you know to be until um, they only care about how they feel when they're around you or what you, how you make them feel. But that's the time where you can touch the conscience and the, and the inner self of our members. You can do it through benefits. You can do it through great games and recreation. We did one where we were talking about dating. But my, my quality of life chairperson, you know, she gave us pointers on our age about dating. And so, you know, about dress and where you go and how do you know, and, you know, just, and then, you know, male and female. And that was the, <laughs> and then we did a fashion show, but it was the best thing because some people, you know, a lot of them alone when people lost their spouses, but we did a whole little thing about the fun thing of dating and the safety of dating. Um, I thought that was fun. So we've done things like uh, all types of things with the physical fitness, the exercises, and we really do the try to make quality what makes us happy. You know, what makes us happy? We do a lot on the health benefits and that kind of thing. But what is it that makes us happy? What's the fun things we can do? How can we laugh? There's a good session that I've done on, you know what, uh, make me laugh. Make me laugh. And you know, when they, and I like to do it at the end of the meetings for regions and for locals because you want to lead, let everybody go with no stress. Make them laugh at the end. Quality of life is a good, that's just a little thing. But you know, most of you region always looked at quality of life. You need an election chairperson, policy person, chairperson. If you're going to do grants or scholarships, benefits. And most of the time, our benefits are on the quality of life and any others that you may have. But it, there are some things that the state will require you to do. So you want to make sure, you, you know, that you have that committee in place that can take care of those reporting things that we need to make sure we share. It is a good way to think of, and I know there's some, there, there, there are ways to think of, um, of members who don't want it to look like school, don't want to look like a faculty meeting, but they want to come and have a good time. Region directors, be very selective on where you meet and how you meet and what you offer your members. It's And I'll take it at the end, we're going to talk about, it's okay to play a game. 
enhanced skills um, with the communication and the technology. You know, we're in a different era now. And um, and so technology is changing as we talk. Uh, um, as I talk to you, they're still outside. Everyone might go into the people at my window because I get my house painted. So I apologize for looking. But they are um, looking at things now about, I'm doing a session, writing it up right now, about how do we uh, benefit from AI? Because right now, AI is, believe it or not, it's frightening to some people. You know how it sort of takes over us? You know, when you're trying to do something and AI don't have time to wait for you to think about what you're going to do. It pops in and try to do it itself. Anyway, so you'll see a session coming that, you know, you might look at, but those are things that keep them updated. Keep your members so they won't fear. Because sometimes people are fear things when they they don't know what to do when they log on to the computer and then they see some tools that they're not used to or they type something in and then the computer changes what they wrote. How do we how do we handle all of those things? So you want to make sure that your members, are Microsoft uh, uh, experts, PowerPoint spreadsheets. PDFs, uh, Google email and drives. It saves us time and money. Websites, uh, domain name. You get someone who is really uh, keep that communication flowing and you don't even have to tell them it's all of this. Once they do it and they'll be like, oh, what's this called? Oh, you just uh, put something to Google Drive. Uh, you did this or uh, you started off your uh, own uh, Facebook or your own uh, website. Uh, some things we don't have time to do, I can tell you, but um, but you can decide that with your, your, your regions. Keep your members, in other words, region directors, keep your members on the up and up and keep them on top of things. Don't look at their age or their stage. Make them feel comfortable where they are and move them to the next level and they'll be there and they won't even know they're there. Trust me. Phone bike, good communication. We get more responses from the phone call that hit someone's house and they'll say, well, I got a phone call. And uh, and if I get a phone call, I won't even know because I don't even answer that phone. But if you give me an email or a text or something of that sort, I'm going to read it. But most, a lot of people respond to the phone bite. Um, and, you know, we only pay five cents if the call is answered. Other than that, it's free. Um, newsletters, documents, Texting, when we were doing the awards recognition, I saw some beautiful newsletters, all different kinds and all different styles. So you got members who will be glad to come in and, and do a session for you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about meetings. I want to see who I have on here. Let's see. I got a people on here that I know know how to run a meeting. Um, so when you think about, if you've got somebody new, do you know one of the big reasons why we don't get new people leading the region or leading our local, they'll say, I've forgotten parliamentary procedure. Take a moment, add that something to your summer leadership and teach and remind them, just because most of them already knew, uh, how to carry your motion through. And when it gets a little tough, you know how the parliamentary procedure, just find your little book and just keep the little copy there and share with them. But you know to recognize someone to raise their hand, motion is presented, motion is second, then it's discussed. It's because you have to be fair to people. You have to allow them to discuss if that motion, if it's a discussable motion, vote, take some action, A and A, by raising their hands and a tap it. Very simple motion. If it gets any more difficult than that, find yourself a parliamentarian who knows those rules and they just keep you on board. Don't not have a meeting because you don't understand parliamentary procedure. Keep your little notes with you. Uh, and when I first got an NCAE, the first workshop they made me take, it was in the 70s, was parliamentary procedure. First year, second year, third year. And I used to teach that. So, uh, but we just had to. In the NCAE, that was just a demand, a requirement. And uh, they did not play because if not, you go to the convention, you wonder what in the world's going on. It lost you off the first motion. So make sure your members are very well aware of that. Uh, region directors, it's a must. You must have, you must use that procedure. Don't shy away from it and don't say, well, we're not using parliamentary procedure today. We're just gonna, we're just gonna be ourselves. Not good. Not good. Okay. All right. Resources on hand. What's available? And we probably got a whole lot more. But if you're gonna be region director, 
You need to at least know the, some of the, you at least never read the Constitution. You need to know the bylaws, not know them, but at least know where you can put your hands on them. Parliaments and, and policies and procedures. You need to know your, uh, your officers, chair people, staff. These are things that you need to know that exist, but they're also resources for you. We don't have to, as reasonable, we don't have to know everything, but we need to know how to find it. It's just like my role as a media specialist for the last, for not last 30 years, but for 30 years in a row, I used to teach the kids. I say, you know what? It's not about what you know, it's how to find out what you need to know. And you can, as a media specialist, my job is to teach you how to research and get and find any, your answer to any question you have. You might in a math class, you'd be the smartest math student in. 20 years from now, you might forget about that math. And that's okay. As long as you know how to find the resources that you need to help you get the answer. So as a, re, as a region director, you have to be understanding of all the resources that are available. So you can help your local presidents, you can help your other board members and tell them where they can go and find answers. Find phone numbers, information. Everybody should be able to find. And right now, the website is really, you know, full of information. And that's a good source. So you need to know that these things are available. And we don't have to have everything in our head, but we at least know how to find it. At least know who to ask. Need to know the numbers that the staff, we need to know who to contact. We need to know who can help us because we're trying to do the best job we can do, but we don't know everything, but we need to know who to call and find, and you, you know, even publish that list, who to call for what and let your local presidents know because sometimes they're new and they might have no clue. We're talking and using a different language and they're looking at us like, what? They have no clue what we're talking about. So let's help them find the information they need so they can be successful. So they'll do it again. All right. Any questions? Any questions? I just take a moment here to talk just a little bit about when you are having your meeting, it's okay to play. Anybody like to play? Anybody like to have fun on here? Yeah. All work and no play makes us what? Go. Right. Oh, yes. Yes. We like to play. <laughs> we like to play. Exactly. So one of the things that I always like to do, you know, just to break the ice sometimes, there are a lot of ways to break ice. And um, so one thing that I like to do, and I have a sample of a, of a bingo game that I created in CRSP bingo game. So it helps me to see who has done what, especially when I'm in a place when I've got new members coming in, it's a new day. And so Ada asked them, they can get a prize. If they get diagonal, horizontal, or vertical, I do this with my kids on time. And if they can feel the name and end those position based on what they have done. So if I am a region director, you know, you, you can cover it up. I submit an article to the newsletter, you know, and cover it up. I chair the committee. Anyway, you can see, you see the point. So I have cards that I've created, laminated in order. And so sometimes I just, because especially to the begin the year during my retreat, We'll pass it out and say, okay. I mean, a lot of time now I like to do it digital, but that's okay. I still do paper. And I'm trying to get rid of all paper, but I still got a few sheets. So I'll pass it out and they'll have my little prizes hanging around. Who would like to have this little cute instrument? You know, oh yeah, I'm going to win this. And so you're going to win it. Let me see what you've done. <laughs> so this is also on the, one of the slides. Let's put one card up here and uh, get a chance to do, break a little ice, I call it. Um, and that's when you're doing something new or meeting a group for the first time, it's good to know this because if you are going to greet them, you sort of have an idea who you who you are speaking to and who you have. You know, uh, if you notice one on here says, have you completed the ENCRSP audit? That's important. Did you know that? Because <laughs> you want to know that. These are things you want to know. And you can change this card any way you want to. It doesn't have to be these questions, but it can be anything you want. You can come up with your own, but that's just one that I like to make games, you know, like to do things like that. And then the other one, I love creating a trivia game. So you saw the bingo, I have familiar trigger, tri trivia. Uh, I might do a trivia um, sometimes when we don't want to just get stuck and having a meeting too long. We'll just, I'll invite everybody to a game day. 
and we'll go find one of the senior homes who has an extra clubhouse room and we go over there and we just do games. I might have the games they done on the table and they have prizes over here and everything. We just do a game day, but, but most of it's about the organization. So we do trivia and just getting to know is another one that's popular. And a lot of these I designed when we were in COVID because I couldn't see them in person. So I did the, these were the ones I did online most of the time. Uh, and so I would uh, shoot it to them and then we could see the screen and see who was covered up what. So you don't have to, if you're not meeting face to face, you can still do these, these games. Uh, it's still tied into about 2020, I think, or 2021, I created a Jeopardy game. It is still online for anybody to use. And um, you click here and then I do the Jeopardy on here. I don't, if I click here, the way I'm sharing, I'm not sharing the proper way, but it's just a regular Jeopardy game. And it's going to, I have my categories on here. Can you see my screen change? Do you see it says North Carolina Retired yeah. School Personnel? Oh, yes. yes. We yeah. see that. And it says three teams. You see that? No. no didn't no. change to that yet. Right, right. I didn't think you could because I have to go out and do it on my on my heart thing. But anyway, right. mm -hmm. this is gonna be Jeopardy. You know how Jeopardy comes on TV. I have mm -hmm. a whole Jeopardy screen on here, and it's the first card category it says state officers. Then I have for 100, please, 200, 300, 400, 500. Then I have regions, I have questions behind their staff. You when when you look at them, when I, this uh slideshow will be put on the um website. So when you click, you will see it then. And then I have NCRSP training. Then I have tools you can use. Then I have staff. And uh, I think I updated the staff and all that. But um, but it's just there for, for you to, to use. And it's on our website. It is on. It, it will be. when I, It will be. Okay. Gotcha. But it, you will see, it'll say Jeopardy there. And it's been okay. there since 2021, I think, now. And I'm feeling, if there's anything I need to update, I can. But if you want to create your own, y'all, yeah. mm -hmm. you, you can do your own. Cat, I did my own categories and everything because you know, as educators, we always create a Jeopardy game. I have one from Sunday school class, the one the kids at school. I have one for language arts, for reading, you name them, because the kids actually love Jeopardy, competition with each other, learning things. It's the best way in the world to teach grammar. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but it is there. But that is a way that I do. And the reason I encourage that, no one, region directors, no one want to come to a meeting and it's so serious, they leave stressed. Do not allow your <laughs> members to be and they are all stressed out. School is always a, uh, will keep the stress down. Refreshments will keep the stress down. You smiling will keep the stress mm -hmm. down. If you are upset and all uptight and not um, upset about something, that's the way your, your members are going to leave. If you want people to really work for you and work with you, you have to, when they leave, they got to look around and say, I'm glad I came. Mm -hmm. Have a joke, huh? <laughs> I mean, you really do. And I'm going to ask you, uh, before I go to my slides, what are some of the strategies that you use to make your meetings valuable and worthwhile? And I know you do because I've heard over the over the years so much about some of your your leadership. Uh Teresa, can you what is something that you do that we need to know? Mm -hmm. Well, um we begin uh with a, a certain uh, format. We have uh, uh uh the pledge and we have uh our chaplain beginning with a joke before she gives uh uh an inspirational thought and prayer. And even before we do that, before we uh, call the meeting to order, uh, we have Pat or Wanda Lawrence doing a move it with some oldie but goodie music <laughs> that makes us reflect and think of um, the good old days. And we, we love that. Mm -hmm. uh, we end our meeting recognizing birthdays, uh, any member who had a birthday in a particular month, receives a birthday bag from our um, uh, greeter. And then we have a special birthday song that we, we sing uh, 
We got it from Pat's church. Pat, you want to sing a little bit of it? <laughs> oh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, and we That's all it. feel good about that. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and we uh, plan an annual program of meetings that... Um, we think our members will be interested in, and we don't. Uh, we try not to repeat uh, meetings too too much. You know, uh, sometimes people still want something on uh, estate planning. Uh, our members like to have contact with the legislators, so uh, we're having a, a, a candidate forum. One time, it was like a candidate forum every other year and a conversation with legislators, uh, the uh, current legislators, the other. But uh, now we're sort of having, um, since we included municipal elections, we start, we, we're having a candidate forum just about every year. And, and our members really do like to uh, encounter our legislators in the meeting. Oh, wow. And we do a craft, and we do a craft. We do do a craft. They like crafts too. I love it. Mem members of our mission, and you're sure making yeah. it happen. Miss Branch, what about you? Anything that you're doing that you want to share? Because this is how we get ideas, guys. I love that song, and I love the fact that you got here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is this Vivian there? Tama, are you there? I'm here. I'm still new to this. And so, because our region meets, well, to have this fall conference and the spring conference. And so, and we have it in conjunction with Wake's meeting. Mm -hmm. And so we have had, and it's been virtual. So uh, we're going to work towards meeting in person, mm -hmm. at least one of those this year, uh, either in October or whatever date we set aside in the spring, mm. uh, because depending on when the convention is. So, but we do have quality of life and it's, you know, working towards doing some other, adding some things to it and still staying within a reasonable time frame. Thank you, thank you. Because, you know, one thing I noticed, you know, the older I get, I just don't want all the bunch of stress I like to sort of smile and live my mm -hmm. life and be happy, you know, cause we can get more done when we're that way. You know, mm -hmm. we just can't be taking our chances being all stressed out. We mm -hmm. just need to be the smile. We're going to get the job done mm -hmm. and we can do it. I don't, I call it doing it with love. And I, you know, I use my name, Lena, L-E-N-A. That L stands for love. If I can't do it with love, I don't even want a part of it. Cause mm -hmm. I know that's going to get more, support than ever any of the issues. We're going to have our issues, but we're going to solve them together. And that's the way I like to look at things. Um, who else is on here? Anybody else? Okay, uh, should I ever give mine? I think okay. I was still on here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most of our meetings are through Zoom. We have a calendar of activities that we do. We do have the in-person um, executive board in the, at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year. Uh, we have a fall um, regional meeting that was very well attended. I, I heard some things today that I'm going to try to incorporate when we have our next one. And this is good for me. Mm -hmm. When we have our monthly meetings, we do have prayer. We have an inspirational thought. Uh, I'm going to, I like the idea about recognizing people with their birthdays and anniversaries. That's something I'm going to do. And we always have food. Mm -hmm. So they love that. We meet at a restaurant in Williamston and they really love that. But this has been good and a lot of things that I plan to use when we get ready to do our planning next month <laughs> on the regional yeah. level. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> We're excited. We love to hear some things. I'd love to keep up with it. Keep them happy. Keep them going. So they'll come. Anybody else? Ms. Faye, you want to share any? One thing that I am going to try this year with the local and still invite the um, other locals in the um, region to participate is have a movie night mm -hmm. and on zoom and just have a kind of a, a watch party mm -hmm. and you know just choose a movie or, or whatever mm -hmm. and good. then announce it 
and then give them the information to log in. And if they show up, fine. If they don't show up, fine. But it, you know, it'll be running if anybody wants to see it. That's uh, good. Yeah. That's good. I like that. One of the things I was going to share that uh, it was uh, with a group of retired educators, and there are like 60 of us, and maybe about 30 at this meeting. But anyway, so we want to have a, a luncheon meeting. This is all on Zoom. Pandemic was going very strong. So we said, okay, we'll have lunch together. So what we did is um, we sent lunch to everyone's house. They could put what they wanted to order. We ordered from Texas Roadhouse. So they could put their order in. So Texas Roadhouse had to deliver to all of these houses. I think there wasn't enough so to get my son to deliver. So when we on Zoom and we were doing, it was like Christmas time. And we were doing games and that kind of thing. Because, you know, just like I have now, I have a whole bunch of Christmas games on, online. So we were doing games. But so the doorbell would ring. We can all see this because we're on Zoom. Somebody said, oh, wait a minute. Somebody's at my door. They go to the door. They're there at lunch. So we're eating and playing games while food was being delivered to the house in person. I mean, it was really powerful to do it during the pandemic because we hadn't seen each other face to face. So, you know, we just want to have lunch together. I'm not saying do that, but uh, that's a lot of setting up and getting the work done and going over to Texas Roadhouse, work with them, getting all these orders. But it really was a powerful. And when members talk about it now, that's the one thing they say they can always remember is just being on Zoom and that doorbell ring. So I said, what you have on your, what you order? Uh, everybody sitting there eating and enjoying a, <laughs> a nice lunch that was delivered to their door. <laughs> that's neat. That's neat. It's just so many things you can do uh, that you, if you want to, to make it. I just say to you, there's a lot of things that can come within our region directors, but most of you have been done it before and you've been there. All I can tell you, keep the members knowledgeable, mm -hmm. keep them happy, take the worry away. We have enough to be mm -hmm. concerned about. Check on region directors, check on your members. Mm -hmm. Members you don't hear from or members that no one has seen or heard from. Have a committee, if anything, have a committee with the hospitality committee, someone who really don't mind calling and checking on people. Mm -hmm. Just say, you know, you can take your roster and you can divide it up by the month. This month, I'm going to check on these five people. And you can just call their homes and just say, how are you doing? We just have to take care of each other. As we reach across the state, we know that we all are holding each other's hand mm -hmm. and we need each other to survive. So I think that we, if people will not leave our organization association and people will continue to come as long as they know that we are care mm -hmm. and moving out of love. If there is um, nothing else, if I, uh, I got something for you. I, I got something okay. for you. Okay. Lena. Yes. My free PPT.com. Is that where you are? Is that what you're using for your presentation? Which one? The one you got right here, the one we're looking at. I'm looking at the bottom of it down there. I like how oh, it's oh, yeah. set up. Oh, yeah, that's a graphics, yeah. Yeah. That's a graphics that I like. You like my graphics? <laughs> I like that graphic, but I want to know where it comes from. That <laughs> how I more... it, but I, I put the words and stuff here. I made it out. Right, yeah. right. Uh-huh. I thing. like that. And there was, so that that is something that can be used, though? My yeah. free PPT.com? Yeah, I have membership there. Mm -hmm. Oh, a membership. Oh, it's a membership. A, a mem membership was free when I first got it. It's probably still free. I don't see anything coming out my account. Oh, but I okay. start throwing and put my information in. Yes. All right. I, li I, I like the things to be a little bit different. Oh, I, I, I do too. I mean, I try not to use that one. I try to use something different. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, <laughs> this is what you mean. Yeah, this is open. And it's very easy to copy and paste these. I just made my own uh, text blocks. These okay. are the text blocks I have here. And I uh -huh. just create those myself and I add them in there with the other blocks. So you can barely tell my blocks different from their blocks. No, you cannot tell them. <laughs> I, I, I just done. like, yeah, I just like that. That's all they, the little blocks on the side that just sort of makes it. So that's just, just real nice that I was just wondering because uh, all the things we are, we are being digital. And so we might as well be digital, creative and cutesy right. and, and interesting and you're telling us to jump out the box they get out of that right. box get out of what that you're box. Telling us. that's right get out the box so that's kind of that's what i was looking at all right well i sure like to say thank you so much for coming today i do appreciate it i am lena Mer chapman your vice president 
And I cannot say enough for all the work that you do for our members. And with that said, are we going to close out, Carol and I, Tara? <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for an excellent workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Lena. You. It's good to see everybody, too. <laughs>